All right, let's talk about then the military leadership in the Southwest, because you have a quite diverse group, especially when we, where you have these two phases of it. You have the Civil War, New Mexico invasion from the Texans, and then you have that Native American conflict. And you have a, quite an interesting group of leaders here with Sibley, who is drunk in Santa Fe while his men are trying to prevent the Colorados from coming down. You have Camby in his role as kind of defender of New Mexico. You have the Californians with Carlton coming in, Kit Carson you already mentioned. So what what do we learn about their leadership here? What what's kind of the big lessons you think we should take away from the New Mexico, US and Confederate leadership? Sure, yeah. So what was interesting to me is that the military leadership here was a, a little bit reminiscent of leadership in the East, right? In the sense that three out of the four of these guys were career military guys. Mm -hmm. They knew each other, um, especially Sibley and Canby knew each other, um, not only from the U.S.-Mexican War, but also from a Navajo campaign in 1860, where they worked together. So they were stationed together, they knew each other. So this is like all of these generals in the East who all right. knew each other. They all knew each other's um, strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. um, so. That's one way they were quite similar. They're also similar in that, you know, they were kind of a grab bag. Like some of them were better than others. Um, Sibley and Carlton actually had, were, they weren't really, uh, like Carlton was a much better logistical person mm -hmm. than Sibley was, but they both had the same idea, which was to stagger their troops. Because one of the big challenges of this theater, which does make it different, is that they are moving thousands of men across huge expanses of desert. So logistically, that's extremely difficult. You have to be able to feed those soldiers. You have to make sure they have enough water. You have to make sure all their horses and mules and cattle have enough water. So they and stagger. Potentially, potentially camels. Yes, and potentially <laughs> camels. Um, and so they really needed to organize these marches. Mm -hmm. um, and Sibley was coming from San Antonio to El Paso. Carlton was coming from Los Angeles. Um, to Tucson in the first stretch and then on to the, the Rio Grande. And so they had this, these good ideas, right? And Carlton was much more successful than Sibley at it. Um, but Sibley was just a disaster in the field. He actually was not a good kind of paper commander. He was not good at orders and issuing things. Um, he had the vision. He you know, was very persuasive. He uh, argued to Jefferson Davis that he could do this with mm -hmm. this army of Texans and invade the, the Southwest and then from there take the rest of the West okay. for the Confederacy. Um, but his on the ground implementation was not very good. Um, so Carlton, on the other hand, very good logistically, never really got to fight the Confederates um, in, this, in this thing. Canby, um, was interesting because his job initially was defense, mm -hmm. which, you know, his strategy was to just concentrate as many troops as possible along the Rio Grande to defend. Mm -hmm. Because, and he knew that if he could get them in the forts and defend the forts, that Sibley would have huge problems because he needed to Surprise. continuously feed his, his guys, and so he needed to take these forts. Um, so Canby did pretty well, although in, he also in command of the Battle of Alberta just sort of messed up. He didn't really, he moved troops around and opened holes in his own line, um, which is not particularly smart. Um, and he did not achieve the victory, um, you know, the really like important victory, which was Glorietta Pass. That was, that was a lawyer from Denver, right? Who just took command of these troops, um, a lot of Pikes Peakers, more gold miners, um, and then managed to have this kind of genius flanking maneuver plan. Yeah. Um, and then Kit Carson was not a career military guy. He was a career military guide, so he was familiar, but he didn't know how to fight. This was not one of his things. But he volunteered for the war effort because he believed in the Union. And he ended up in command of the first New Mexico. And they gave him that command mostly because he was fluent in Spanish um, and well regarded um, among the Hispano community. And so he led um, that regimen and, uh, pretty ably in the Battle of Valverde. Um, and then he's the one who took command of the Indian campaigns, so of the two the, in the north, the Mescalero, Apache, and the Navajo. Um, and he was best at hard work at vigorous war. And Carlton was the one who embraced that as well. So again, we see 
some kind of um, intersections with the Eastern theater in the embrace sure. of, of new kinds of warfare on an enemy.